Hi, welcome to Bad Music Taste and Other Ways to Ruin Your Life. My name is Dominic. And my name is Sam. Dominic is our record this week. This week's record is The Crew by 7 Seconds. The copy I have here is a repress on Pink Vinyl and was released in 2021. Anyways, today we're talking to Porcel of Youth of Today, Shelter, and Project X. How's it going, Porcel? It's going great. You want to know something? I talked to you guys, what, it was, it was almost like a year ago today, right? We did the last interview? I think it was... I know it came out on election day last year, or maybe not exactly election day, but when it was like announced that he won. Uh-huh. I re- <laughs> Cause I remember I was sending everything up for it to go on YouTube and I look at the TV and it's like Joe Biden won. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, what's funny. You kids have grown up in one year. Like I haven't <laughs> seen you in a year. And you guys look so much bigger. it's crazy (laughs) yeah well um and since then shows have come back how is it getting back into playing shows i only played one show so far um played punk rock bowling in las vegas like a huge punk rock it's probably the biggest punk rock festival in america you know there's bigger ones in europe but it was incredible you know I, i literally we played Youth of Today, the Shelter played a show right at the end of December 2019. And that was like, you know, and then I went to India and then I got back and it was like the lockdown. So that was the last show that I played was December of 2019. And then I didn't play again until Punk Rock Bowling, which was this summer. And I hadn't even been to a show for like almost two years, for like a year and a half. I hadn't even been to a show. And I got there kind of late. And it was a, it's a it's a three day festival. Um, yeah. The first night was the Descendants headlined. Second night was Circle Jerks, and the third night was Devo. So I stayed for the whole festival. And I walked in, and the Descendants were playing. And the Descendants <laughs> are like one of my favorite bands, and I was oh like, Oh my god! I have the the poster right there. Oh really? That's <laughs> awesome. Like I can't even imagine, like not doing anything for like two years and then coming back and your first show is the descendants and the circle jerks and fucking Devo. Yeah. And I'm a huge Devo fan too, dude. You guys are probably like a little too young for Devo, but Mark is when I was your age, Devo was the jam. (laughs) (laughs) Well, well, Mark's Mark's a bucket list interview. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of shows, we're waiting for you to come to Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't Baltimore in so long. You know, Baltimore is one of those cities I hear, I hate to say it, I hear Baltimore and I get a little cringy. <laughs> eh, eh. We are, we're a fun place to play. Yeah. Plenty of good yeah. shows. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't played there in years so last time i played there shelter played kind of a little club and we 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 were playing like a whole kind of like longer weekend and i believe the show was on like a wednesday or maybe a thursday it was the first show that we played and um so we played baltimore and that show was like really weird and it wasn't really such a great show and all the other shows were great (laughs) (laughs) so maybe i maybe i'm a little bit uh (laughs) Um, I mean, we've had some great shows recently. Oh, like we just it's... saw, yeah, we just saw Field Day. Um, oh, cool. yeah, played, you know what's really cool? Um, at Punk Rock Bowling, they put all the punk rockers, all the bands, in one hotel. <laughs> all and, and all the kids know that this is the hotel that the band stays, so all the kids get rooms at this hotel too. And it's a really nice hotel. It's like a Hilton or something, like a huge hotel. And it's so funny because the whole hotel gets taken over by punk rock. And there's, there's barely a few like businessmen. I remember like the, I had my luggage and everything and I get in the elevator and it's just like filled with people like mohawks and chains around their waist, like spike jackets and stuff. And then there's like a businessman in the corner of the elevator. <laughs> Thinking like he's like, am I about to get like jumped or something? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, 
yeah but it was it, it was really cool so we uh so we stayed there and um there's a pool at the hotel and so every day and every night bands play at the pool and field day played at the pool yeah it, and it was the first time i saw them they were really good they were really good. <laughs> I'm a huge Dag Nasty fan, and I gotta say they really ripped those Dag Nasty songs. They played all Dag Nasty songs. They didn't play any like um, I think they might have played like maybe one or two of their kind of like newer songs. Yeah, Dag Nasty songs, and it was like wow, I was psyched. Yeah, I wish they played originals more because I really like their originals, but they do, they like rarely play them. Huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, we saw them at uh, this little place called the Auto Bar, and then we got like lunch with them beforehand. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was pretty been, cool. They've been on your show a bunch of times, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we talked to Doug twice, and then it took like a year to get Peter on. Because uh-huh. <laughs> after Doug, uh, we were like, oh, Peter, can we get you on? And he was like, I, I don't do interviews. And then we came out with the Ian interview. And then he was like, maybe I do do interviews. <laughs> uh, Big time now, man. And, <laughs> and then and then he can't, he like, it was like on and off for a little bit. And then we got him like a month or two ago. <laughs> yeah. And it was really cool because it was like pretty close to like when we actually went to see them. So it just worked out perfectly. Like the timing of things. Yeah. That's awesome. And we were so nervous before that because we were like, what if what if this isn't like a great interview? What if we don't do well with Peter and then we have to like sit with him for like an hour eating pizza? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did the interview live? With, with no, him? no. We did the interview like a week before. Oh, and then you had to go in. And- yeah, because we, we had yeah, we, we had that planned for a while. And then we were like, what if this doesn't go well? And we have to like sit there with <laughs> <laughs> and just like eat lunch after We're being sorry like, so. <laughs> <laughs> um one thing i want to say i'm super stoked that the record for today is seven seconds the crew oh yeah because you know that's literally it's one of my favorite records of all time and it's funny that you said that that record came out in 2021 because that was the repress but it actually came yeah out yeah 1984 yeah and I was probably, you know, I was a teenager. I was like 15 or 16 when that record came out. And Seven Seconds were literally my favorite band. They only had two seven inches out. They had Skins, Brains, and Guts and Committed for Life. So they weren't like, when the crew came out, they really kind of broke and became like a huge band. Yeah. But they were still kind of like a little underground at that point. But I loved those two seven inches. They were like, they were my life. Those, like I literally would play them every day and be like, oh my God, I just want to see seven seconds. They're like my favorite band. And then I heard they were coming out with a record. And then and I heard it was going to be called The Crew. And I was like, okay, that's the coolest name. I got to get this record. <laughs> it's so funny. Like back then, you guys don't even know, you know, you guys are whatever. What do you, what do you call your guys? Are you guys Gen Z's? Is there a new name for you? I think, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, try to imagine a world without the internet. Like, just try to even fathom that for one second. Like, that's how I grew up. No internet. My, no. Um, in my biggest culture check, like, when my mom was talking about not having internet was when she was like, you know, we used to go to the library and check things out. And, like, you know, we had to, like, write stuff in. And I was like, like having to do that without just like scanning a barcode for your card with the library, like that was that was it for me. My yeah. my biggest like whoa from like was like when you talk to somebody from government issue, and I was like, how would you like figure out venues to play at? Because now oh, it you was impossible. it was impossible. Yeah, because now I... you can just look up like small venue California, right? A million <laughs> things come up, but like, I can't even imagine how you found like venues in like out right. of state then picture this picture this um it was before cell phones and long distance calls were crazy expensive like one long distance call will cost you like 20 30 bucks so i booked the very first youth of today tour it was the can't close my eyes tour when our first seven inch came out i was 18 years old and you want to know how i did it my friend 
was like a computer genius when computers were first starting. He was literally like the fir- one of the first hackers. Like he was just like, he was a computer genius. And so he would hack into um, these credit card databases and he would get phone card numbers. And so you just used to be able to call in and you'd use like IBM's phone card number and you would be able to make long distance calls. So you'd make long distance calls for free. And these numbers would go all over the punk scene, like literally black flag tours, circle jerks tours, you know, seven second stores were all booked using this one punk rock kids, illegal credit card numbers. And so I remember, I didn't even know what venues to call up. So I, I, I called up Kevin seconds and I was like, Kevin, dude, I'm going to book a tour. I don't even know. Like, how do I do it, dude? Like, what are the venues? So he, luckily he had, I think, I'm not really sure where, he had a list of clubs. I think he either got it from Ian or he got it from the guys from Black Flag or it might've been his own kind of thing that he put together. And um, I sat down on the phone with him. You know, it wasn't like, hey dude, can you email me that list? I sat down on the phone with him and he said the name of the club and each number. So it was like a long distance phone call on the credit, on the fake credit card. <laughs> I made my own little kind of like database of clubs. And the first tour that I booked was seven seconds. We're doing an East coast tour. And I was like, I was like, Kevin, can we play some of those shows? He's like, I don't know. You're going to have to call up the venues. And so I called up the venues and I literally said, we're a band. No one's ever heard of us, but we're on Kevin Seconds record label. Can we please play the show? And they would say, okay. And practically every single place said, we can't give you a guarantee. We might be able to give you gas money. And I was like, yes. (laughs) (laughs) I booked the whole tour on these, you know, thanks to Kevin Seconds, like little list with an illegal credit card. And, you know, that's just like how we did stuff back then. It was like, it was like the... The Wild West back then. <laughs> the dude with the credit card comes back after like a little bit and is like, what the fuck? Somebody spent a thousand dollars on phone calls. Well, the, the credit cards, they would get canceled after a while. Like after oh. about two weeks, they get can- and you have to make them from a pay phone. So you can, yeah. you can do it from the house or you get busted. But literally like every single punk rock tour in the 80s was booked by those things because you just couldn't afford <laughs> to make long distance calls back then. It's crazy. But it was really cool because, you know, this was before the internet. So I heard that Seven Seconds were coming out with a record that was called The Crew. But of course, you know, you don't really know when it's coming out. Like, you know, there's no information. There's no internet. So you don't know. So I lived in, a, I lived in the suburbs. And of course, there's no punk rock record store near me. So the closest punk rock record store was either in New York or it was in this place called White Plains that was like about half an hour train ride. So I used to get on the train. I'm a kid, I don't have any money. I'm like, you guys don't have any money, do you? Do you have money? Do you have jobs? I do, yeah. Sam, Sam, where do you work? I work at like a local restaurant. So that my mom used to work at, they're like family friends. So it's a little bit easier, wow. but no, that was recent though. I mean, so to be fair. <laughs> How old are you guys now? 14? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys, I mean, most 14 year olds don't have jobs. No. <laughs> I must have been like 15 because, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if I worked or maybe I did like, maybe my dad flowed me like 20 bucks for mowing the lawn or something, but I barely had any money. So I wanted to spend money on records. So I would get on the train and I would hide in the bathroom the whole time so I could take the train for free. <laughs> get off in white plains and there was one punk rock record store and i would go in there and i would just say is the new seven seconds record out and the guy would say no and i would just be like, whatever and i'd buy like a misfit single or you know something like that and i did this for months like literally like the re- it took so long for that for the crew to come out and then finally one and i would do this every week and finally after like three months i walked into that record store and i said is the seven seconds record out yet and the guy nods over like this to the bin. And so the way that the bins start, you know, bins usually start numbers first and then A, B, C, D. And so right in the numbers, the very first record 
was the crew. And so he nodded over and I looked over and I just saw like seven seconds, you know, how you can flip through the records right in the front. And dude, I walked up and I just like picked up that record. And I was like, wow. They flipped it over to the back. Oh, wow. This is the record I've been waiting months for. <laughs> and I bought that record. It was just like, it's just an incredible, even to this day, it's just an incredible record. Yeah, mm. I, um, I recently got into seven seconds after like they announced, like, of course I knew who they were. I just never like really listened to them. And then they announced like, like trust record said, Oh, the crew's coming out. And it was such a huge deal that I was like, okay, I'm going to start like listening to them. First album, first song I heard escape and run. And I was like, okay, I like this band. (laughs) And Oh my God, this is a great record. I'll just say. It's amazing. Yeah. It stands up to this day. It's like a great hard, melodic hardcore record. And that record was the blueprint for practically every melodic hardcore band that you know has come since. You know, even bands these days that come out, you know, they wouldn't sound the way they sound. If you're if you play kind of like faster hardcore stuff that's a little bit more melodic, like you owe such a debt to seven seconds. <laughs> It's like, like, yeah, you go from like seven seconds to like the bouncing souls. Yeah. H2O or, you know, any of those kind of things nowadays. (laughs) Such a groundbreaking record. Yeah. Uh, Sort of changing it up. Um, This interview is coming out on Thanksgiving, by the way. Um, Yeah. Thanksgiving isn't the most like vegetarian or vegan friendly holiday. So not you, at all. Yeah. So <laughs> what do you typically do for like Thanksgiving dinner? And what advice would you give to people with the same dietary restrictions? Thanksgiving is tough if you're vegetarian or vegan. And it's especially tough, you know, if you're going back home to like your parents. I remember, right. um, I remember one time I went back home and my mother kind of cooks something vegetarian but she cooked it with like, I forget what it had. It had like eggs or something in it and I didn't eat eggs. And it's just so like, and your mom spent so much time. She's trying to make this like, you know, friendly, you know, diet friendly meal for you, but they always screw it up somehow. (laughs) You can never eat it in the end. (laughs) And then you feel bad. Um, There are some really good, you know, they they make like a, there's there's a thing that's called a tofurkey. You ever have a tofurkey? I've heard of it. There's there's tofurkeys and there's different kinds of tofurkeys. There's one brand that I had last year and it was actually really good. It wasn't a tofurkey. I can see the package, but I don't know what the brand is. But if you buy some of those things, and usually they'll have like around this time of year, they'll have like the Thanksgiving package and it's got like the you know the soy gravy or whatever and the <laughs> cranberry sauce and all that stuff. But they're pretty decent. But usually um on Thanksgiving, um, you know, I'm divorced, so my kids come over the next day, and usually I'll cook something like burritos or something. <laughs> 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 A little bit more, just like whatever. We're just gonna eat food. Like we're doing the Charlie Brown thing. Here's a bowl of popcorn and some pretzels. <laughs> 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 but uh, but yeah, it's I mean, you know, once you're a little bit conscious about, you know the fact that so many animals are killed, like, you know, when you think about Thanksgiving, it's basically like a, a turkey holocaust. And we're kind of celebrating that, you know? Yeah. It's, so, a, it's like, such a weird day. I'm going to pick out a day. And it's a day that I'm going to try to be like thankful and fill myself with gratitude. Um, and it's just so diametrically opposed because the whole thing is sort of you know, the foundation of the whole thing is where we unnecessarily just kind of kill a turkey. Yeah, because, like, I know part and part of my family does, like, celebrate with that and part doesn't, but you think about it just in general, like, whether you do celebrate like that or not, and you're like, it's kind of unsettling. Yeah. I think about how many turkeys, like, you go to the store and you look in, like, you know, that section and you're like, that's a lot of, like, animals being killed for like one day and it's just kind of like a reality check where you're like oh that's not 
not really okay. <laughs> Forget it. You two guys are future vegetarians. You guys already <laughs> know too much. <laughs> See, because you, you want- yeah, you said it last time. You were like, now you guys are just like being fed, which is which is true. Um, yeah, because I mean, you can't. You uh, like more restriction on like you know the options, but like you get older, it's like oh, well, you kind of pick out everything. So yeah, so it's yeah. a lot easier to lead your own diet. <laughs> But, you know, if you ever got, if you guys ever really kind of um, wanted to get serious about it, I bet you if you talk to your parents and be like, I'm just kind of serious about this and I want to get into this, I bet you they'd be cool with it. I think they'd be fine. Yeah. My mom, like, we've talked about trying it for like, um, like a couple months at a time and stuff like that, just to mm-hmm. see like the difference and everything. Mm-hmm. We're, we're getting into it gradually. It's like Monday, we don't eat meat, you know. That's great. One day a week, meatless Monday or whatever. Yeah. Um, and what I recommend to people, you know, cause I'm a yoga teacher. So I always have people that, you know, once you do yoga, you start getting into things like higher consciousness and meditation. And then, you know, inevitably the whole kind of like vegetarian things comes up because, you know, when you're trying to improve and you're trying to become more compassionate, you know, there was just a whole, um, you know, which is all part of yoga inevitably that's going to come up being more compassionate in your diet. So I always tell people have a meatless Monday and on that Monday, go to a really good vegan restaurant you know, or, and, you know, and get a taste for how delicious vegetarian food can be. And it really kind of like over time, it really makes a difference. You know, it's not like you're, you know, Oh God, I can't eat meat today. I'm just going to eat a peanut butter jelly sandwich or like, you know, when I, when I became vegetarian, like I just straight lot, black you know, beans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to make it really attractive. Like you gotta, you know, get, get yourself some, some good food and, and then you'll, li- you'll literally get a higher taste from it. Yeah. Like there's this uh, pizza place that Sam and I go to called Johnny Rad's yeah. and like, they're obviously known for their pizza, but I'm really happy that they also have like, they're also really well known for having vegan options. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Like, um, and Johnny Rad's is probably the coolest name of a pizza place <laughs> I've ever heard of. Oh, you uh, should see their logo. It's, it's the best. It's the four black flag bars. No way. Yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's entire- the place. That's the place we went with Field Day. It oh, is sorry. just <laughs> the coolest place ever. Like, and just the fact that they have that many options for people makes it even better. It's yeah. So you know, let me, let me ask you guys some questions. I'm a little bit, intri- you know, I'm always intrigued by you guys because you're so young. What are, what are some cool, you know, I'm old. I'm like out of touch. I don't freaking know anything. What are some cool new bands these days that you guys are into? Whether it's hardcore or whether it's, a, it's like regular music or, or whatever. What's kind of, what's new on the radar these days? Well, I'm sure you've heard of Turnstile. Yeah. Yeah. Those all are great. Yeah. Um, there's this local band. We've talked to somebody from this band. It's called Truth Cult. Just, yeah. again, going back to, like, the melodic hardcore thing. Uh-huh. Just oh, my God. They're, incredible. They were, <laughs> they were, they were yeah. yeah. And they were, like, our first show back. And just having, like, been able to see that was it was insane the energy that they brought was just great and it felt like you, you hadn't missed a beat since we had you know to be in like quarantine and everything and not just that but when we saw them they play they were the opening opening band there were three bands yeah. and they were just the very first they played like 30 minutes of just unrecorded stuff never yeah. never before heard stuff um and it was like there was just no stopping no like taking a second to be like great to be here great to be here after uh like two years of not doing anything it was just song after song after song after song after song okay we're done (laughs) but it's like any old stuff that people knew no just new stuff back to back and then they just they just got on stage did their thing and then walked right off you know what i love that yeah Yeah. i love when bands play new stuff even if it's not out yet i remember one time um the bad brains were playing a squat on avenue (laughs) city which back when i lived in new york like you literally heard that thing that avenue a was all right 
B was be careful. C, you were crazy. And D, you were dead because the neighborhood was just so bad down at, at D. You probably get shot. And so I remember thinking I was standing on Avenue A and I was, and the show started super late. It's out of squat. The show started at like midnight. It was that band Nausea. You ever heard of that peace punk band, Nausea? No. From New York? They're like an old kind of piece. They're pretty, a little bit of an obscure band. Um, Warzone played and the Bad Brains played. And there was a rumor, it was before, I don't know if you guys are into the Bad Brains, but they have this record called Eye Against Eye. Oh, or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> groundbreaking record. And rumor has it had it that they were going to play a bunch of songs from their new upcoming record. Like, and this was months before I, I Against I came out. And so I was sitting on Avenue A and I was like, it was like, you know, almost midnight. I was like, okay, man, I got to take my life in my hands and just march down to Avenue C into the squat. <laughs> and so I went down there and it was so cool because the Bad Brains didn't play one old song. They just played all their new songs off against Eye Against Eye. And it was incredible. I just love that. I love. Right. Yeah. I love I love like, you know, being one of the first people to hear new music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just um, that's my favorite Bad Brains record. And yeah. just okay. it's okay. not released. And you hear just that record, like front to back, not even knowing what you're hearing. I can't yeah. even imagine. Just like it was really, really cool. About a, a band being able to like control like an audience like that and keep everybody so interested is so captivating just because it's like nobody really knows any of these songs, but we're all still into it. See, because that's just so like that takes so much like courage, you know? Right. It's totally. like, Cause that that could go really good or really bad. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um what are some other bands that you guys are into? Are you guys into um bands that are like more kind of mainstream pop culture bands there's a couple but i mean we just saw this um kind of bigger band called water parks yeah um which they're uh, like yeah they're they're like kind of poppier they're like pop punk out of houston but i've known them for like a couple years now and i'm like you know pretty safe i think just use the word obsessed um, I just I love what they do and like their records it just uh, you know as soon as I hear like that even word of it and they drop like the pre-order I'm like yep that's what like, it's on my wow. it's on its way you know so I'm I'm trying to think of who else I'm listening to right now like new bands okay, how about this what's your guilty pleasure like already you went to like oh. K-pop and, and BTS or like oh um <laughs> I don't huh See, I, I, I never saw, got I, mean, I never got too big into this band and just because their singers a, a dick they're a guilty pleasure the smiths <laughs> yeah. dude you're talking to the biggest smiths morrissey fan like ever <laughs> i'm convinced that morrissey got a raw deal but they're they're good um yeah, yeah. um the i don't smiths know are incredible they're one of the best fans like ever <laughs> they're it's pretty great Sucks that Morrissey got canceled. Yeah. Um, but... I'm really not into cancel culture. Like, you know, Morrissey's music has had such an impact on my life. It's hard for me to just kind of like turn my back on him and just be like, nah, fuck Morrissey. You know, I still have like a special place in my heart. And I don't know, he's he's written, you know, everybody says, oh, oh fuck Morrissey, he's racist. But he said he's said anti-racist things in his lyrics and his songs. Like it's it's hard for me to think, to believe that Morrissey is just like a bigot. Like I, I don't yeah, know. I, Maybe I don't know. Sure it is not. He's never really kind of like went out of his way to defend himself. Yeah, I personally right. think it could go both ways when it yeah. comes to like your opinion on Morrissey. Yeah. yeah. Um. But overall, they are a good band. Like undeniably, yeah. it's yeah. I've seen Morrissey maybe like almost, I've probably seen him around like 20 times. <laughs> Seriously, like I'm sort of, um, I have a friend who's like a, a really good friend of mine who was in a band with Morrissey's guitar player like back in the day. They were in like a rockabilly band and they're like really good. Johnny Marr or 
Not Morrissey's Johnny Marr. Solo he's stuff. a guitar player for the Smiths, but in Morrissey's band, he's got a guitar player called um, Boz Borer. And so my friend was like really good, kind of like teenage friends with Boz Borer, and they used to be in a rockabilly band. And one day I was, I was just randomly on the phone with my friend, and he was like, yeah, I just saw Morrissey for three nights in a row, and I was backstage, and I was talking with Morrissey. I was like, what the, how did you get freaking backstage? And like, we're talking to Morrissey, and he was like, oh, I'm really good friends with Boz Borer. <laughs> and I said, dude, Morrissey sold out. Is there any way you could get me tickets to the Morrissey show? And he, and he goes, he goes, hold on. He goes, he goes, I'll call you back in, in three minutes. And he hung up the phone. He called Bosbor, and then he picked up the phone. And he says, "You're on, you're on the guest list backstage for the Morrissey show." And I was like, "Dude, you're freaking kidding me!" And so I met Boz at that show, and he gets me into like every show. I've, I've seen Morrissey like twenty times for free. <laughs> really cool um not a obviously not a new band and not necessarily a guilty pleasure but i got really into oingo boingo recently oingo boingo are great too you guys are really like you guys are digging that was a, the that archive was a, that was a big face for you <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow. um what, what about you sam i was gonna say I'm swift, looking... do you like taylor swift i will say it? and i will I don't dislike Taylor Swift, but would I put Taylor Swift on some of like my favorite mainstream? No. We would I very- turn Taylor Swift on? No. Would I turn Taylor Swift off? No. Exactly. <laughs> Is it my first choice? No. However, Is it my last choice. Okay. If did 20- you guys did you guys watch that new Taylor Swift mini movie that's like 15 minutes long? I didn't watch the movie, but I listened to the song. Me too. I didn't watch the video, but I didn't watch the video. My daughter is a, she's a, she's a self-admitted Swifty. <laughs> I mean, she's like Taylor Swift since she was, I mean, she's 18 now, but she's like Taylor Swift since she was like 13, so. Our, one of our, our very, one of our very close mutual friends is like a huge, very open Taylor Swift fan. Oh, yeah. So. Right. We've kind of been surrounded by it since like everything, you know, has like been released, but I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not complaining. It hasn't been horrible. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I have any guilty pleasure bands that I listen to, but there's a lot of stuff where it's like, it wouldn't be my usual. Like, uh, have you ever heard of Childish Gambino, like Donald Glover? Yeah. My, um, uh, my son's into Childish Gambino. Yeah, that's one of just like not necessarily guilty pleasure, but it's like one that I don't front a lot just because I don't know that many songs, but like it's like a certain mood I have to be in to listen to to <laughs> listen to that playlist. Like I don't know how to explain it, but um I don't know. I'm like looking through my Spotify. And yeah, like, so am I. Uh-huh. But I don't know if there's any guilty pleasures. Now I just want to like shout out stuff that I've been yeah. listening to. If you were gonna recommend one band to me oh. as like a hardcore punk old school dude like that I probably wouldn't know about who would you recommend to me so I can like I well, I talked about him a lot truth call just truth call oh. yeah I'll definitely I mean them out. we mention them a lot especially because we get asked about like local stuff but they yeah. they deserve it like oh yeah great. not it's- just that but they are extremely nice people <laughs> cool um yeah yeah because we um we went to their show a, a little a few months ago and then their singer just like runs out and like gives us hugs and is like oh okay we're about to go on <laughs> yeah well you guys are cool you're like you're, you're 14 year old celebs with your podcast over here <laughs> yeah i mean uh, when you come to baltimore because i'm assuming it's happening now <laughs> yeah, we'll probably, we'll probably we're, we're actually playing a bunch of shows next year we already have um we're going to europe in uh in early summer we're playing some shows in may so we're gonna start hitting the road again next year awesome. so hopefully we can play yeah. baltimore i mean if you come anywhere near us we will definitely yeah. show up <laughs> like dc's not that far from you guys right we usually no, yeah uh-huh. dc's doable um and like, i know my parents don't really like going to dc I'm, too much but 
my mom would be totally fine. So. It's like there's certain occasions where it's like DC, DC's all right. Where it's like, hey, uh, I just got an invite from Ian. They're like, okay, I'll go quit my job. Uh-huh. <laughs> like my dad many times said, I would quit my job to go to the Discord house. I've all, you know, I've never been to Discord house either. I've always wanted to go on that porch and take like a Youth of Today picture on the, you know, the salad <laughs> picture on the porch. The funny thing was, he brought it up. Like we're about yeah, to we're- leave. We're like, okay, thank you so much, Ian. He's like, wait, 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 wait. Do you want the picture on the steps? Because <laughs> we, we were like, it's really weird to ask. Yeah. It? You know, like as we're walking out the door, we were like looking at each other and I'm like, do we just go, hey, can we get a photo on these steps? Like, like hey, can we like recreate was- that thing you did uh, 40 years ago and that you do with yeah, everybody? Dude, I, I would just be so bold and asking, hey, Ian, let's <laughs> take a picture on the porch. Oh, and I what think- sucks is Jeff Nelson was supposed to be there that day. Oh, really? And it was like right after... It was, it was right after we had talked to him, right? We talked to him that Wednesday yeah. and then went there that Friday. So okay. we were like... If, like, like, you had Ian and Jeff... That's what I... Guys was Baker, and one of you guys was the guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> Just, like, totally it, create the picture. It would have been so cool. I mean, it was great in general. Like, I feel like the reason we weren't as bold toward the end is because like we walked in, we were nervous. And then by the time we got out, we were just all struck. Like we were like, oh my gosh. Cause, like, <laughs> yeah. Cause we both but, said like, we have no expectations going into it. Right. And it's like the most organized mess ever. Wow. Cause you walk in it's and it's so like, cool. there's just stacks of everything, but he knows where it all is. Wow. It's so cool. I mean, genuinely, there it's just such a great experience. And it was like it was everything we could have hoped for and more. Like yeah. we went in. I I mean because we're I, sitting I there and he's playing like old Dag Nasty recordings, and we're sitting there, like Ian's like singing along. Right. And just like looking through the files in the computer, and it's like, oh yeah, that's where this one is. And it was he was just like, name a band. I bet I, I bet there's like a file on it. And we were just like like just going back and forth and there was always something to listen to it it was crazy and it's Um, like he was like looking through him he was like you guys like minor threat right no 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 (laughs) we're actually not a fan we're like no no what are you talking about who (laughs) you know what i just saw online was all these um all these letters that Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters we wrote s- Ian. We saw one of those. He, yeah. Oh, yeah so he cool, wrote a it? little note and he was Ian was so suspenseful about it. He was like reading it. He was like, hello, Ian. I would like a new band. And I think you know people. He turns it around and he goes, Dave Grohl. <laughs> <laughs> he was like covering like the signature the whole time. And he's like, Dave Grohl. Yeah, we were- I, there was just like an audible gasp in the room. I was just like, no way. Like, it was so cool. Um, I yeah. love the Fugazi Thanksgiving memes. Like, there was one, it was like, you've heard of Elf on a Shelf, but have you heard of Makai on a Pie? That was. Oh God, I think that was... It's coming um, up. It's for that. Yeah. It's that was like a year ago now. We did the interview over a year ago. Yeah, I mean, that one came out on Thanksgiving last year. Yeah, so we had <laughs> Ian last Thanksgiving, you this Thanksgiving. It's a pretty good run for Thanksgivings. Yeah. <laughs> you want to know what I wanted to talk to you guys about? I saw a really kind of semi-disturbing Joe Rogan, and they were talking about like teenagers today, and that and the guy had all these st- statistics about. You know, you guys are like a real experimental generation. Like you're the first generation that's grown up with like video games and cell phones and social media and just like, you know, virtual reality and all this kind of like weird stuff. And it, and the guy was a psychologist and he was saying about all the detrimental effects that it's having your generation. And dude, the statistics are scary. It's like your generation has the most teenage suicide. Your generation has the most kids on like opioid medication for depression like your generation is like super screwed up the scary i I think the scariest thing to think about like with that conversation that i always bring up is just the fact that it's like the public eye that's always there and i mean of course there was always bullying there was always mental illness there was always people you know getting made fun of that that's always been a thing but it's like 
being in such like a spotlight at times because of social media and feeling like you have to live up to a certain standard, I think has been really hard for people because it's a lot harder to be not what's normal. But I don't think it like, I don't think with this generation, it just automatically like became so much worse. I think it just became easier to talk about. Yeah, it was it was a little bit easier to discuss because you saw like the younger because it's because then it's kind of it. like like you think like forty years ago nobody would have talked about that and yeah. it would right. be like, kind of like there was kind of a stigma around that like you talk right. like you're like oh I'm being bullied probably because you're a pussy or something like that. Well, you know, Joe Rogan brought that up. He said something like, "Do you think this has always been that way, and now we're shining a spotlight on it, or do you think it's actually gotten worse?" with just this kind of like computerized generation and and this guy the guy was saying no it's definitely gotten worse like i would say to an extent like and this is from our i mean obviously your perspective is going to differ everything but like from our perspective being in the generation at least what i think is like to an extent there's been a little bit worse for the sole reason that it's like there's more of it you know like it's like the normal like for you know i think yeah it. and that also became easier because now you can just like text somebody and tell right. them everything they're can, doing like, wrong anonymously <laughs> like message somebody find them pretty easily mm-hmm. on stuff like that but i think also it's just like it's that we can talk about it more now because there's more data on it as well so being able to see kind of how things have changed and shifted is also another reason why I think it's like a bigger deal than it was, say, like you said, Don, like 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. You, you know, what's really cool. I had a conversation with my daughter about this. It's, it's, you know, it's really cool to be into punk because punk teaches you such a great life lesson. Punk, you know, because you know, one of the big problems with kids today is that, you know, you're on social media. Social media is like this highlight reel of everybody's life. They never put the bad stuff. They only are like throwing the good stuff up. So everybody's life looks so attractive and wonderful and great. And then you're sitting there with your crappy life and, you know, your problems and stuff. And it's just like, you can't seem to live up to the standard of of other people, which is actually like not even reality to begin Mm -hmm. with. Kids get right. Like everything's falling apart, but this is an awesome picture of me. Yeah. (laughs) That's kind of, right. And that's kind of the front that's been put up. So I think that's kind of the whole idea of it is like, we kind of compare ourselves to other people and we'll look at it as something like that. But to be able to take the step back and be like, okay, but they might be in the same situation as I am. They're just better at hiding it, you know, or something like that. I think that's like the really weird thing about it to be able to see how easily it can just be kind of covered. And that's like a big thing about social media. It's like you hide your imperfections. Even the fact that you can filter your. your Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can go and like use Photoshop and just fix everything you don't there. You use Photoshop anymore. You just use the Instagram filters. <laughs> oh, wow, this one, you know, and there's like, there's always that Instagram filter. It's like, oh, look, I put this filter. It gives me like great skin. <laughs> right. Know? You have like any sort of like imperfections in your skin. Oh, look at this filter. They automatically go away. So it's so hard to live up to that. And you're, you're constantly comparing yourself to other people. And that really has a detrimental effect on kids. Well, you know what a great thing about punk rock is one of the lessons about punk rock is you know what i'm gonna go my own way and i'm not really gonna care so much what other people think about me like i remember it was like right you know when i was in high school and i was into punk you know my high school was like an uber preppy you know everybody dressed the same i mean everybody had like you can't even believe everybody would have polo shirts with popped collars with like a, no, an IZOD shirt with the collar popped with the polo button up shirt underneath it. And then you would have like khakis and usually you'd have like those, those penny loafer shoes. You ever see that you can put like the penny in them? Like literally it was like a uniform. It was like everybody was just uber preppy. And if you stepped out of line from that look, you know, when you have like 99% of the kids all dressing in like one kind of fashion to step out of line from it, especially to put on like a leather jacket and then like a shaved head. Yeah. Totally different. 
you know, it took guts, but it was really, it was a great life lesson. It's like, you know what? I'm just not going to care so much about the status quo and what other right. people think of me and what other people you think. think most people probably did not want to be wearing what they were wearing then. Right. And if yeah. it makes, if it makes you happy, you put on what you want, you know, like at that point, that's all that matters. You know, a lot of people are just like, you, you know, it's easier to conform and fit in than it is yeah. to just break the mold and go your own way. But punk teaches right. you, hey, break the mold, go your own way, make your own path, you know, dress the way that you want. You don't even have to wear a mohawk and, you know, bondage pants, you know, wear something else, you know, wear whatever you want. You know, there's right. like, and there's like a real, there's a freedom from public opinion in punk rock that man, it can just carry you through life. And you really, you know, it, it, it helps you through your whole entire life. You're kind of free from that whole thing of, you know, just, you know, because trying to fit in and trying to like, you know, compare yourself other, to other people and always try to like live up to like this artificial standard. When you just have a little bit of detachment from that, man, you save yourself so much anxiety. And, you know, supposedly, like, that's just a huge problem with your generation. So I'm glad you guys are punk. <laughs> Stay punk your whole entire life. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, just even if you're not, like, you know, just keep that mentality of punk. Yeah. That, you know, you don't have to follow a path or live up to a certain standard. Um, you know, it's a big problem with kids these days. Well, Porcel, thank you so much for your time. This was a lot of yeah. fun. Yeah. All right. Awesome. It's always, dude, and dude, it's always so great to spend <laughs> time with you guys. I feel like I'm watching you guys grow up. I'm, so, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm just super into what you guys are doing. I'm so happy to see, you know, young kids are passionate about something. They have this podcast. They're crazy successful with it. Just keep going, keep going. It's, it's like, it's, it's amazing to see. I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do the part three next year. <laughs> we'll do the part three next year. Your voice will probably have changed by then. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because like we've gotten a couple we've gotten a couple of interviews after we've gotten a couple of like part twos after posting like this was a year ago and then they were like okay want to do it again <laughs> all right all the best to you guys have a great Thanksgiving you too stay thank bonk. you stay bonk stay bonk you too <laughs> all right bye all right bye take care. <laughs>